So hello and welcome everyone. My name is James Miller. I am the moderator for today's session. I work for First People's House of Learning, which is Indigenous Student Support Services here at Trent University. And with me today are a number of faculty members from the Indigenous Studies and uh, Indigenous Environmental Studies and Sciences departments at Trent University. So I would like to introduce uh, David Newhouse, who is the chair of the Chani Wenjack School and will be presenting in a moment, uh, Dr. Robin Quantic, Joanne Argue, uh, Barbara Wall, and Chris Fergal, who are the faculty members uh, joining us for the presentation today. David, if you'd like to uh, take over and uh, guide us through the uh, slideshow, that'd be great. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks, James. Uh, I'm, as James has said, I'm David Newhouse. I'm the uh, director of the of the Chani Wenchak School for Indigenous Studies. So welcome. It's a beautiful day out there. And we always start with an acknowledgement, right? An acknowledgement of, of creation, acknowledgement of uh, all of those things that are in our world. And so we've been greetings this morning before we start to all of creation. Uh, let me see. My slides are not moving for some reason. Oh, here we go. Okay. We, we want to acknowledge uh, that we're on the land uh, covered by the Dish with One Spoon Treaty in the traditional territory of the Michi Saki Anishinaabe on the land covered by Treaty 20 of 1818 and the Williams Treaties of 1923. And so now that uh, all the words that need to be said have been said, we can now begin. So welcome to, to Trent University and welcome to uh, the Chani Wenjot School for Indigenous Studies. Trent uh, has been uh, involved and committed to Indigenous education since 1964. Uh, and Indigenous education at Trent is education for all. Indigenous studies is not just for uh, indigenous uh, students, indigenous education, uh, indigenous environmental studies and sciences is also not just for uh, indigenous students. Uh, we welcome all students and we hope that the knowledge that, that you gain will be helpful to you in your future lives. We recognize that we live in a uh, increasingly complex and, and global world that we're all related and we also recognize that we are as a country in a national project of reconciliation. And we would hope that our students would be able to contribute uh, to this project. It's an enormously important project that's going to take a long time. And as you'll see, uh, one of our courses helps us to ensure that students can in fact uh, uh, have the knowledge to be able to contribute to that project as well. And we're hoping that uh, uh, our students can also understand uh, the knowledge that Indigenous people bring to the table and what that knowledge can offer. The Chani Wendat School for Indigenous Studies is fairly new. Uh, this year, it, we're celebrating in April our uh, fifth year. Uh, we've been around, though, as the Department of Native Studies and the Department of Indigenous Studies since. Uh, uh, 1969, right? And uh, the, the school is comprised of the academic programs, uh, the First People's House of Learning, which James works for, uh, the Budaway Center for Indigenous Knowledge and Language, and the Enway Center for Professional Learning. And our mission is to create the world that Jenny Wenchak was running towards. Uh, he died while, uh, as, while running away from an Indian residential school. And um, we like to think that what we're doing is helping to create the world uh, that he was running towards, a world where he was respected, a world where he was acknowledged, and a world where he would be able to make a contribution. Uh, the picture on the left is, uh, of his sister at the opening of the school. When you come on campus, you will see a large yellow building, although it's not really yellow, it's ochre number 22, right as well. And for those of you who choose to come to Trent, we hope that all of you come to Trent uh, 
you will be asked a convocation that what the color of the building is. And if you don't know the color, you will not be able to graduate. So it's ochre number 22. And, uh, and it's a building that you cannot miss on the main campus. And it consists of a number of different indigenous spaces uh, that are distributed throughout the building right, as, as well. Uh, we also have space in the library, uh, the seated room, uh, the Indigenous Studies uh, uh, Reading and Meeting Room, also known as the seated room, and the library also, also houses the Research Center for Indigenous Environmental uh, Studies and Sciences. Indigenous Studies has a number of academic programs. Uh, we offer a Bachelor of Arts in uh, Indigenous Studies, both at the three-year and fourth-year level. Uh, we also offer a Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science in Indigenous Environmental Studies. And in collaboration with the uh, Trent School of Education, uh, we offer the B Bachelor of Education in Indigenous Education. And for those of you who are interested in the future date in graduate studies, we uh, offer with uh, the Canadian Studies uh, program and the Trent uh, uh, School for the Study of Canada, an MA in Canadian Studies and Indigenous Studies. Uh, we work with uh, our colleagues in the Trent School for the Environment uh, on an MA in Sustainable Studies, and we have our own PhD in Indigenous Studies. And we have somewhere between the, uh, 15 and 20 faculty members at any particular year as well. We want to talk a bit about our programs, and the first programs we want to talk about is Indigenous Performance, which is uh, proven to be one of our, our most popular uh, programs. And Joanne Argue. Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Joanne Argue, and I teach in the Indigenous Performance Program here at Trent. Um, it's a subsection of an Indigenous Studies degree, and you can, you can get a specialization in in Indigenous performance. Uh, we work out of No Gem, the first people's performance space, which is the only university theater dedicated to Indigenous performance in North America. And it's a lovely 100 seat black box theater with retractable bleachers that allow for um, audience comfort and also um, lots of space for classes to work in. We offer Indigenous theater, dance, music, and storytelling using a combination of workshop and classroom teaching. And we also provide opportunities for technical and management training in performance. When you take a course in Indigenous performance, it gives you the opportunity to explore cultural knowledge um, in a unique way from a different perspective of that that you're learning in your more academic courses. There's a lot of knowledge is held in story, song, dance, and performance is integral to that vast body of knowledge for every culture. And while we highlight the traditional aspects of culture in our courses, we also put a focus on contemporary um, Indigenous stories, exploring how those deep knowledges are being brought forth and reimagined re today. Students are encouraged to explore and share their own cultural teachings and languages, and we work to foster cross-cultural understandings between Indigenous and non-Indigenous ways of doing and knowing. There are often opportunities for public student performance within the courses at the end of each semester, and we, we provide opportunity as well when we're not in COVID <laughs> to connect with professional Indigenous performers throughout the year. Um, while we host Indigenous performance in Nogem, we also partner with Public Energy, who's a performing arts presenter in Peterborough, and that offers students a chance to see professional performance in a larger theater. Um, and those performers that come to Peterborough often provide workshops for students in Nogem, either in classes or as a special event. And one of the most exciting things we've done recently is um, host the Nagojumanang Indigenous Fringe Festival, or NIF for short. Um, it, the inaugural uh, festival was last summer, last June, and it was quite the unique experience as we pivoted numerous times until we were a drive-in festival. But it was still a really, <laughs> um, a, a really good 
experience, I think, for, for the folks who attended. This year, we're quite excited to have a much larger festival where people can come in person outside of their cars, and it will be indoors and outdoors. So if you're in the area, uh, June 20th to 26th, please come to see all of their Indigenous performers there. Um, there's always opportunity, especially in the festival, to volunteer, to work in the various areas, and we always encourage students as well to apply for, um, to be performers at the festival. So I hope that gives you a bit of understanding of the work that we do, and if you have any questions, please be in touch, and we'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Joanne. Uh, just to note that Trent University now has a co-op program in the social sciences, and there will be opportunities uh, for students to spend a work term working uh, with NOZEM and uh, hopefully with the Indigenous Firm Festival as well. So next, we're going to talk about uh, Indigenous Environmental Studies and Science Program. This is a program that is unique to Trent and is a collaboration between uh, the Trent School of Environment and the uh, Chani Wenjak School for Indigenous Studies. So Chris Fergal is the uh, director of the program. Great. Thank you, David, and good morning, everybody. Um, as David mentioned, my name is Chris Fergal. I'm a non-Indigenous settler scholar here within the faculty. So it's something to, to be aware of and, and um, sort of to, uh, to, to recognize is that we very much, um, as David was opening, um, sort of walk the talk with regards to reconciliation and regards to instruction and engagement in the classroom. We have both Indigenous and non-Indigenous faculty members, and I'm one of those non-Indigenous faculty members. I have a cross appointment between the School of Environment and the Cheney Wenjack School uh, for Indigenous Studies. And right now I'm the interim director for the Indigenous Environmental Studies and Sciences program. As David mentioned, it's a pretty unique program, even in country in Canada, if not throughout Turtle Island or North America, in that we bring together both Western sciences and Indigenous knowledge and teaching by having traditional teachers, Indigenous faculty members, knowledge holders, and practitioners work right alongside and come into the classroom, come into the lab, be out on the land with students, so that students are taught and, and essentially instructed and exposed to different knowledge systems and understandings of the environment to help them better essentially prepare to address those issues, those issues that are confronting many Indigenous communities throughout the world today with regards to climate change, environmental development and pollution, food security and food sovereignty, and things like that. But also, many of those issues are influencing and affecting non-Indigenous communities and societies as well. We look at what we do as really being an emerging academic discipline, where at the heart of it is this notion of multi or inter or transdisciplinary understanding, transcending different knowledges or different ways of knowing to better understand what we're trying to grasp and understand and affect positive change for. So our students really are encouraged and supported and guided in creative and critical and innovative thinking. And we respect the fact that the process of coming to learn together and learn from different perspectives and different knowledges is one of the outcomes of that learning. And it's not simply the solution to the problem. If you can go to the next slide for me. Okay. So in our program, it is three year or four year BA or BSc degrees. In our program, you would start off with two foundation courses, Foundation for Indigenous Environmental Studies and Sciences, as well as the uh, uh, Introduction to Indigenous Studies. In our second year, students are introduced to Indigenous knowledge systems and the importance of those in the context of the environment. And then in our third and fourth year courses, those two clusters in the lower half of the slide, students have the option to be exposed to and to engage with a variety of different topics that either are IK or Indigenous knowledge focused or that are really weaving IK and science. As well, our students would be taking some or environmental studies and sciences courses to round out that learning. In the fourth year and in some third year courses as well, there's as much emphasis as we can have on practice and experiential learning as well. And we're further strengthening those options for students also. 
In 2015, we brought together Indigenous Environmental Studies and Sciences learners, practitioners, and visionaries. And we're really looked at within our program as one of the leaders in this area of essentially creating the idea of this new discipline. And in the corner there in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in the Haudenosaunee purple um, is the, the founder of, of our program and our other faculty member, Dong Lo Dan Longboat, um, a Haudenosaunee scholar uh, who's not with us this morning. Next slide. Where do our students go to? Well, they're coming from and they go to work for, in many cases, First Nations, Métis and Inuit communities. Many of them have gone on and gone back to their own community, to a regional organization or a national organization. Um, they work for the government. It's great to have these individuals like yourselves that have this skill set working now essentially within non-Indigenous institutions and starting to indigenize and decolonize those. Many of them work for private consulting firms. Many go on to graduate school and professional programs, as well as working for uh, industry and business. So we really hope in your interest within Cheney Wenjack School, if you're interested in environmental issues, that you consider uh, the Indigenous Environmental Studies and Sciences program. So back to you, David. Okay, thanks, Chris. And next is Robin Quantic. Robin, you are muted. I was spontaneous <laughs> while I was being muted there. Uh, good morning. My name is Robin Quantic. Uh, I, like Chris, I'm a non Indigenous, Indigenous Studies scholar. I coordinate uh, foundations programs, Indigenous Studies 1001 Foundation for Reconciliation and Indigenous Studies 1002. Um, these are large courses. Um, uh, we have uh, 18 workshop leaders this semester working, Indigenous and non-Indigenous workshop leaders who work with faculty to provide as much as we can an individualized experience. For the fall, uh, Indigenous Studies 1001 will be a lecture seminar course. So a two hour lecture and a two hour seminar. Uh, or rather a one hour seminar. Um, we uh, provide a foundation for a critical discussion of Indigenous peoples in Canada. It's a multidisciplinary social science program. Um, and we try to root all of this in principles of Indigenous studies um, with elements of history and English and sociology, politics, cultural studies, and so on. We have students from every discipline across the campus who come to take Indigenous Studies 1001. It is ideal for students who have no background in Indigenous Studies. It is part of the Indigenous content requirement uh, process. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, students who come and they may not take another Indigenous Studies course. We hope that what we do in our program, we put a lot of emphasis on trying to provide people an individualized learning experience. So we hope that, that people will come back for another Indigenous Studies course. But if you're coming in and saying, this is just, I'm gonna wanna do my ICR, uh, this is probably the course for you. Um, our other course is Indigenous Studies 1002, Critical Incidents in Modern Indigenous Life. We recommend, uh, strongly recommend that you take Indigenous Studies 1001 before you do 1002. Like 1001, it's a multidisciplinary social science program. Um, uh, the, the themes are focused in the course are focused from the period which begins around 1970 to the present. To the present. Uh, and like Indigenous Studies 1001, it's a lecture seminar course. And so we have seminar leaders, uh, two hour lectures and a one hour seminar each week. Um, And again, students from every discipline, although most people who are taking 1002 are probably thinking about taking another Indigenous Studies course along the way. Okay, so thank you. Okay, we, thanks Robin. Um, the other undergraduate program that we have is a Bachelor of Indigenous Education. This is a joint program between the, uh, the School of Education and Professional Learning, uh, Indigenous Studies. Uh, academic programs and the first school's house. It's a five year uh, concurrent program 
for FNMI students, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit students who self-identify. Uh, the program had, had its uh, first graduates uh, last year, and uh, it has now about 30 students enrolled in it. Trent now has a co-op program, right? And, and Indigenous Studies and Indigenous Environmental Studies have been approved for uh, uh, co-op programs. So you can get a, a Bachelor of Arts in Indigenous Studies co-op or a Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science uh, in Indigenous Environmental Studies in co-op. And what this means is that uh, you would spend three work terms working uh, in an Indigenous organization or on Indigenous issues. We have a lot of opportunities uh, both within Trent and within the local community and also in Toronto, Ottawa for our students to uh, take. And so if you're interested in a co-op program, this is a, a an opportunity that is uh, not unique to Trent, but that is uh, developed uh, in a unique Trent way. Trent uh, has been following uh, a mission since 1964 to help to create a Canada that creates spaces of dignity and respect for uh, Indigenous people. And in 2011, uh, the Trent Senate and the uh, Board of Governors agreed upon a vision statement for the university that is the most profound in the world. And our, our vision statement says we foster an environment where Indigenous knowledges are respected and recognized as a valid means by which to understand the world. And so in doing so, Trent rejected the premise of Indian residential schools, which was intended to remove the knowledge that we had used to live in the world uh, for millennia and to bring it into the, into the university and to begin to explore it. And that's been the work we've been doing now for the last uh, uh, half century or so. The first it was House of Learning, uh, was, uh, uh, was created in 2001, and it provides uh, a wide variety of, uh, of student services and, uh, and, and traditional teachings uh, to students right across uh, the university, but, look, but primarily for Indigenous students. And James uh, uh, works for the Frisco's House. Uh, and I don't know whether you want to say anything at this point, James, or not. So, I just, uh, I mean, I popped some links into the chat, so, and I will certainly pop a link uh, to the First People's House um, uh, website into the chat. Uh, we do have a session today going on at 1 p.m. Uh, mm -hmm. for uh, students who are interested in learning more about First People's House. And as David related, we provide uh, cultural supports as well as uh, academic uh, financial um, housing and, uh, and, and many other supports uh, for Indigenous students at Trent University. And we also um, do our best to indigenize the campus. So we focus on cultural events uh, for students of all different backgrounds, focused on sharing Indigenous knowledge um, at, uh, at Trent University throughout the year. So yeah, come check us out at 1 p.m. Um, the link to our presentation is, uh, is uh, in the main, uh, the main page for a virtual open house today. Miigwech, David. Okay, thanks, James. And, and uh... The First of Us House also offers a traditional teaching program in that they bring elders uh, to the campus in a series of weekly and uh, weekly uh, sessions with elders. They also they also host a visiting elders program, and, and so uh, there is a cultural advisor there who also provides advice uh, and support to Indigenous students and non-Indigenous students, right as well. So. And this is the traditional teaching program that First Eagles House uh, offers in collaboration with uh, the academic side of the, the school. Uh, it's the Visiting Elders Program, traditional teaching nights with local elders, uh, the annual elders gathering, which just occurred uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we also have a chair in Indigenous Knowledge at Trent, uh, 
the offer culture workshops uh, sweats for uh, students upon request. And there are within also uh, the Chinese Wenjia School opportunities for learning on the land and learning on the water as well. All involved in uh, indigenous uh, elders and indigenous knowledge keepers. And they also provide uh, academic support. So academic support is provided not just by the faculty, but also by the First Peoples House staff okay, as well. Okay. So thank you very much for, uh, for attending. We hope that gives you a sense of uh, our programs, a sense of what is available at Trent, and a, a sense of how we go about uh, teaching about Indigenous peoples, about Indigenous issues, and uh, the climate that we attempt to create, the climate that is welcoming for everyone who comes uh, to our school, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous. We have students from right around the world uh, who take our classes as well. And, and so they go back and, and they find uh, that the knowledge that they gained is, is extremely helpful and relevant to issues that they're dealing with in their own communities as well. So thank you. James, we're back to you. Wonderful, miigwech David. Thank you so much uh, Niawe for, uh, for your beautiful in-depth presentation. And thank you to all the other faculty members who uh, touched on the many various specialties that uh, uh, the Cheney Wenjack School uh, collaborates on with uh, many other departments uh, at Trent University. So at this time, um, I would like to open up the floor to questions uh, that any of the attendees may have. You have two different options. You are welcome to raise your hands um, using the, uh, the raise your hand uh, button at the bottom of the, um, of the screen, uh, the Zoom screen there, or you are welcome to populate the chat uh, with any questions that you may have. Um, and so we have our first question. So Andrew, this is a question for the IESS faculty. So Barb or Chris. Um, Andrew says, thanks for hosting. How many credits are the three-year programs for Indigenous Studies and IESS? So for the three-year uh, program, it's 15 credits, uh, yeah, five sort of full years of, uh, or sort of three full years of five credits each year. Um, and credits may be, a, a single credit may be a full year course, or it may be two half year courses. Um, we have a relatively small number of required courses within our program. So it still provides you a great amount of flexibility um, to take other uh, indigenous studies courses and uh, school of environment or environmental studies and sciences courses as well. Yeah, I think Chris, they, they, they now, a, a term course is now three credits and a full year course is now six credits. Okay, and, they've changed so they, the addition. They, they've changed all the terminology. The value in addition, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so, yeah. they, so you need, for a three year course, you need uh, uh, 45 credits. Oh, okay. <laughs> and for a four year degree, you okay. need 60 credits. Okay, yeah. So to, to let you know though, Andrew, it's uh, the equivalent of uh, five courses each term That's for right. three years, regardless of the, the numbers the university has changed to put on it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Works yeah, out to be the same thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we tried to be consistent with other universities, so that's oh, okay. Uh, All right. <laughs> um, and Andrew, if you have any any questions uh, about uh, enrollments uh, or anything like that, there are some links in the in the chat there. Um, so we do have uh, enrollment advisors. I myself am the Indigenous Enrollment Advisor for incoming Indigenous students at Trent University. You can reach me at FPHL Enrollment at TrentU.ca. Um, and even if you're non-Indigenous, you're welcome to reach out to me, um, and I can always connect you with our um, our mainstream enrollments. Uh, advisors who work for the admissions department at Trent University. So I just popped my email into the chat there. You're welcome to reach out uh, with any of those questions and I can make sure that you get to the right department there. Um, okay, so uh, Andrew has one follow-up question. How do co-op programs add to yearly timetables? And then uh, there's also another question uh, from Lexi after that. So first off, uh, yeah, how do, how do co-op programs add to yearly timetables? We're just in the process of working that out, but it will require you to take a course in the summer right, in order to meet all the requirements as, as well. So the co-ops uh, 
are offered in summer and fall and winter. And so over the course of, of three or four years, you take uh, one, one term co-op in each of those three times. But that does require some adjustment to the academic schedule for you to take uh, academic courses during the summertime. And then the co-ops are all paid positions. So you're not working for free. You have the added benefit of getting your degree as well as getting some money in your pockets uh, while mm -hmm. you're engaged in those co-op programs. So, yeah. Yeah. An important this is why I wonder, James, that we, well, we haven't heard from Barr. Barr teaches the first year course in Indigenous Environmental Studies. I wonder if, we, if she wants to say just a, word, a couple of words, because we have about 30 seconds left, I think. So. 30 seconds to encapsulate a, uh, a really wonderful course. Um, thank you, David, for giving me the opportunity to speak. So that course, um, IESS 1001, is a half-year course. It meets the uh, ICR, or the Indigenous Content Requirement. And it really focuses on, um, Chris and I talk about it as, as really it's a philosophy of knowledges course. And, and looking at indigenous knowledge and Western scientific knowledge and doing some assignments and some practical applications of bringing those two knowledge systems together. It's a really fun course. I hope to see you in it in the fall. And, and, and Barb lives this. Barb is, a, is trained as an engineer and she's also a, a knowledge keeper, right, as well. So, and then so she lives and envisions uh, uh, what she teaches. So. Me quite stated. <laughs> and uh, Lexi had a very quick question. Uh, Lexi um, was wondering uh, about students who come from a background uh, in high school with some previous experience in Indigenous uh, issues. Um, so she's, she's, I think, asking as it relates to the 1001 and 1002 courses, if there are additional options for people to come in with some, uh, um, some carrying some knowledge. On, on those subjects? Um, not, not specifically. Um, uh, we don't have like a third course. Uh, we try to bring people together. And if, if you have knowledge in your, so that it's that to some extent, what we're trying to achieve here is what comes out of bringing together people who are hearing about the doctrine of discovery for the very first time with people who are familiar with it. And the process that happens in our seminars around everybody sort of learning a, a, a common language. Um, so no, we don't, we don't separate out by that. We strongly advise people who have uh, all, all of our students to take 1001 before 1002, but we have had students who have some experience going into this and they come to 1002 and they don't bother with 1001. And, and Lexi, just another note, depending on your program, if you're required to take uh, an Indigenous course requirement, so perhaps you, if you are in a different subject other than Indigenous studies, we do have advanced um, Indigenous studies courses which fulfill the ICR requirements. So one of them would be a second year course, which is Introduction to Indigenous Knowledge, for example. So perhaps if you have some background and you are taking a different degree program outside of Indigenous studies, that can be an option. Barb and Chris offer a really tremendous second year Indigenous Environmental Studies and Sciences course, uh, IESS 2601, which also fulfills the requirements. And there's also a number of really lovely performance-based courses, which uh, Joanne um, offers um, as well. So there's lots of different options if you do carry some knowledge, if you are in a different degree program, um, uh, to, to take some of that advanced knowledge. I myself, being an Indigenous uh, person, went through the 1001 and 1002 course. I was quite familiar with a lot of the subject, and I still learned a tremendous amount from it. So even if you do come from a background with some of that knowledge, there is always opportunities to learn more. Um, and both those courses certainly certainly provide that. Um, so at this time, it's 1033. I don't want to make anybody late for other sessions. So I just wanted to say che miigwech, niawankoa, uh, to uh, all of the uh, faculty members um, in attendance and to everybody who um, attended our sessions today. So just as a reminder uh, for other Indigenous related sessions, you can check back on the main page um, of the uh, Trent uh, Discover uh, sites. Uh, we have uh, First Peoples House session coming up uh, shortly and we also have Foundations of Indigenous uh, 
uh, learning or FOIL program session, which is coming up at 1130. Um, the FPHL, First People's House, is coming up at, uh, at 1.30. Um, so hope to see you guys both there, anybody in attendance. Uh, and again, miigwech for attending. Recordings will also be available. You can check back at trentu.ca slash discover. And so at this time, I will wrap up our session and uh, hope everybody has a wonderful day. Thank you so much.